Okay, so continuing on with this sort of small house um, sort of tutorial that I've got that we started um, the last time, um, we're going to do windows and doors today. Um, so basically, you'll notice the difference between last time's model and this time. Um, I've got a couple extra walls in here. I went ahead and changed this wall that we had as a 2x4 wall to a 2x6 just for like we'll say ease of framing the guys in the field being able to just frame that out as a two by six wall straight across there it'll also be a bearing point across um, so having this all be a two by six wall that's bearing um, works a little better um, additionally I added a wall here this is basically just our two by six wall that we had before only without drywall on the one side um, so that's just called the exact same thing as the other one just says one sided um, and then I put in our little mechanical closet over here with our 2x4 walls um, with drywall on both sides. So um, moving on from that, uh, getting into the sort of uh, doors and windows of the model, um, we'll come up here and we'll do doors first. So if I go to doors and yours will start out with uh, this single flush um, sort of door and if you go to load family and doors um, there's a whole bunch of options here, but under residential, if we scroll down, there's a couple of options down here. And for our front door, I'm just going to do like a single three foot, um, basically like a French door uh, here. So when you double click on that to load it in, it asks you what sizes you want to load in. You can load them all in or you can load in just a couple. Um, I wouldn't recommend loading them all in. Typically, you're going to have one height of door throughout your project. Um, you might change heights depending on like a first floor, second floor, if the first floor is much taller than the second floor, stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, you only want to load in kind of doors that you think you're actually going to use. Otherwise, you'll bog your model down too much with unnecessary stuff. Um, so I know I'm only going to use this door once as my um, front door here. So. I'm going to say it's a 3 foot by 6 8. Um, 6 8 works just fine, especially since we only have uh, 8 foot ceilings in this. So I'll load that in, and when it's loaded in, then it appears in this drop down menu here. So if I select my 36 by 80 inch uh, door here, you can see I'm on my level 1, um, which is where I want it. And then I have my sill height um, is at floor level, my swing angle, I'll show you in a second, and then do you want to show the the mutton bars or not? You can check that on and off, the head height, all of that sort of stuff. But when I hover over a wall, you can see I can flip it back and forth here, um, depending on kind of where my mouse is on the wall. But if I hover over and I click, it'll place that wall, or place that door in the walls there and I can use these arrows to kind of flip it back and forth I can flip which side the swing is on that sort of stuff and the swing angle it corresponds to this so whenever if you're in a situation um, and a lot of times it'll happen when you have two doors um, that are kind of in a corner like this uh, that overlap and it doesn't read real well it looks kind of uh, junky you can change this to a 45 and this to a 45 and it'll read a little bit nicer um, just in terms of graphics and that sort of stuff. Um, some people like to have it as a 45 all the time. Um, it just kind of depends on what you're after. I'm going to keep it as a 90 um, because I prefer to show kind of where the, where the door folds against to show kind of how that works. I'm going to use my detail lines here just to uh, kind of sketch in um, where that countertop and cabinetry is going to be. Uh, make sure that, okay, yeah, it is two foot there. Um, and when I go to position this door, I want to make sure that I've got, got it kind of positioned in a decent spot here. I want to make sure that I have enough room to get casing and that sort of stuff around this door uh, before I get into my cabinetry there. So if I've got a one inch overhang on my countertop, and then I'm going to do like a three and a half inch casing. Um, so I'll have a quarter of an inch reveal on the jam, and then my three and a half inches. So I'll have three and three quarters inches there. So that'll be where my casing ends up. Um, that should give me a pretty good amount there. So let's say I give myself two inches of space there between my. Um, my countertop and the edge of my casing. So 
that should work out pretty well just um, where it is so I've got my door in there now for interior doors I'll need a door into my bathroom and a door into my closet um, oh before we move on one thing that I will need to uh, look at is normally when you do an exterior door you're not going to sit it right on the floor you want that door to have a threshold um, especially an exterior door when um, when people kind of throw down a mat or something like that you're going to want to lift that door a little bit so that when it opens up it doesn't bind the the rug or whatever that they put down there so typically like a two by four if you put a so in this case we have a two by six wall if we if the framer lays an extra two by six on the floor there just to raise the raise the sill height of that that door up an inch and a half that's usually pretty good um, so I'm gonna actually raise the sill height of this an inch and a half and it's gonna show those lines there that's just telling me that you know it's not all the way down the floor it's not cutting the entire thing and if I go to my 3d view you'll see it's lifted a little bit um, and kind of how that that sits within the wall there so now that I have that um, we'll do our interior doors here. So I'll go door. I'm going to load family doors, residential, um, and then I'll just kind of flip through here and see. Um, maybe I'll do. Do I want a single panel, a two panel? I'm going to make this. I think the aesthetic that I'm going to go for with this is kind of a little bit, a little bit rustic um, sort of look. Um, so we'll kind of go kind of cottagey, farmhouse, rustic sort of thing. Um, so I think I might do just a two panel here. So if I go to my two panel, um, size doors I might want, maybe a 3.0, we'll try a 2.8 and a 2.6. A um, so we'll grab those and load those in here. Okay, so I've got my 30 inch door, that'll be a decent door to go into my bathroom and then I'll need a 36 inch for my my uh, utility closet here and for this utility closet I want to make sure that it looks okay from the outside I don't really care whether I get casing on it from the inside because nobody's ever going to reach around and look inside there to see whether there's somebody has cased the back side of that door since it's a, a utility closet it's not that big of a deal so I want to center this door between this this wall here and this wall here and there's a couple ways I can do that I can go ahead and just look at the numbers here and then punch in whatever it happens to be equal to or I can do it this way if I click on this little dimension um, thing here it says make this temporary dimension permanent so I click that and now if I click off of the door that dimension string is stuck there but what I can do is I can click on that and hit this EQ which will automatically make these two dimensions equal so it jumps those two to equal so now I've got this um, this door that's equal distant from here to the jam and here to the jam um, which will line up in the center. Yeah, we might have a little bit of an issue with we'll just end up running drywall along this wall and butting to the jam there, but I'm not too concerned um, about what that looks like on the inside there. So now I can go ahead and get rid of that dimension, and it's going to say that I put in uh, equal dimension constraint on that door, and even though I delete that dimension string, it's going to tell me, okay, yeah, like it's going to keep that on there. I say okay that's fine I want to keep it even so I don't really need to worry about that um, so three and a half foot um, wide is what I have there overall width here we're down to about eleven five and a half um, which should be just fine maybe we'll bump this instead of eleven six let's make this eleven nine that way that that door works out um, a little bit better there so you can see when I move that, it automatically adjusted the door so now that drywall doesn't butt right into the side there. So that works a little bit better. It gives us a nice big door for our um, water heater and stuff like that in there. So I'm going to flip this so that it folds against that side. 
uh, and then I've got my my door over here so if I've got my I'm going to use some detail lines to say I want a two foot it'll be two foot one with countertop that's where my vanity will be um, and I'm going to jump this over here so you can see I'm going from there to there which is three I want from here to there three and three quarters of an inch that's going to be where my casing line is so if I grab this and I say okay I'm gonna bump this over a quarter of an inch that way I get I'm okay there I still don't have enough room over here to get my casing around my my countertop so maybe rather than a two foot vanity maybe I bump it down to maybe I do a 21 inch deep vanity um, so a 21 inch deep vanity I can I can get my casing on there and I should be just fine and I still have room to bump it this way an extra quarter of an inch so there we go so I know I've got my door in there I've got all these doors kind of worked out now I need to start working out um, kind of windows but before I start just throwing windows willy-nilly all over the place in here I need to kind of figure out how I'm gonna lay this thing out and as I'm thinking about here I've got my lofted bed up here um, maybe we'll do something to get another bed in just like um, for you know guests things like that something that's not used all the time um, if I've got my TV over the top of a fireplace here I'm gonna do furniture kind of this way like this um, maybe I'll get a window in here to get some light into this room but I could do I could do something that's like 18 inches deep across here maybe it's a storage cabinet storage down below maybe some bookcases on either side um, and then the couch will sit in front of that and then we'll do like a almost like a Murphy bed where the Murphy bed will fold down over the couch and we'll stick some legs in you'll have some legs that fold down that sort of thing so whenever you need a bed it folds down otherwise when it folds up there will be a panel there that's decorative maybe it has a piece of artwork or something like that on it um, so we'll do something like that there that'll that'll look nice um, it'll also give kind of a feature wall to this room and we probably won't have enough room let's say I have a Let's say I end up with like a three foot um, fireplace unit in there. Will we give it a little bit of room to fit? Um, so if we have a three foot fireplace unit, then we're going to want this to be evenly spaced. Um, and you can, you'll notice I'm grabbing these little toggles and kind of pulling them around. These I can click and it'll jump from one side of the wall to the other. Um, that way I can kind of see where my dimensions and stuff like that are so if I say that's two and a half so two foot six and a quarter looks like the the number so two foot six and a quarter on either side that centers the fireplace between my built-ins and this wall um, I may end up shifting it once I get kind of furniture and stuff in here I may shift it a little bit closer down here to the corner so that way my my sofa and stuff like that isn't right on top of the the fireplace actually we'll go ahead and do that now maybe we'll move it down like an extra an extra 15 inches something like that so that should work pretty well there then our our furniture arrangement and all of that will sit around that okay so moving to windows um, I'm gonna have windows across over the sink I've got my refrigerator there maybe I'll stick one window at the very end of my galley kitchen here so if I had if I have my two foot galley kitchen I had my two and a half two foot three inch So this is my refrigerator sitting there. I end up with three and a half foot there, so maybe I'll do like a little, um, like two foot nine inch window there. Um, great big window over the 
over the sink, maybe a great big window here, a couple windows there. Um, might be able to get a window in off to the side here. Uh, and we won't do any windows in the bathroom. Um, maybe we'll do a window on the side here. We'll see. So I'm going to grab a window. And you can hit load family, come down to windows. There's all sorts of um, different stuff here. There's skylights and all sorts of different things. Um, so we've got bay windows, little box windows, stuff like that. So there's all sorts of different stuff in here uh, that you can use. I am going to use, I might just stick with the stock kind of fixed. Um, because I think that's probably going to be a good placeholder for now until I figure out what the what the sort of what I want my actual like windows to look like I'll use that as a kind of filler um, so I'm going to use this fixed and I've got my sill height my head height that I can set there um, and I have a bunch of different options in here. So this is a 36 by 48. So height of the window and width of the window. Um, how much is the window inset? So that's basically where's your glass pane sitting compared to the outside. So how is that sitting within the wall? Um, rough width and height, you, that's just a type in text thing So for scheduling and that sort of stuff. Uh, you've got analytical properties. This is for if you're creating an analytical model that you're going to use for energy analysis and that sort of stuff. Um, you can adjust all of that. So uh, then our glass pane, our sash material, all of that, we can, we can pick what that's going to look like, but we'll get into that as we get into materials a little bit more. So I'm going to duplicate this, and I think I'm going to do um, something... I'm going to do like a 54 inch tall, something fairly tall, and like 24 inches wide. So we'll do a two foot by four and a half foot tall window. And we'll say OK. So if I put, maybe I'll do a triple here. So I'm going to move these together. I'll grab these three, and I'm going to center this. So if I grab that, and I'll go to the inside here. So, make this a two foot five on either side there. So, I've got these three here, and my sill on my stone, my stone is three foot high, and then I have a three inch sill on it. So I want these to sit right on top of that, so I'm going to say a three foot three. So if I go to my exterior, that sits just about right. And that gives me, with an eight foot tall wall, if I put a double plate on the top, that'll sit right, those will sit right underneath that double plate. Um, make it fairly easy. Um, as far as framing goes, since that will have a gable over it, we won't have a bearing um, header in there. So that should work there. Um, and then I will keep the same, this same sort of look going over here. So I grabbed all three of these, and I'm going to copy it into this wall. But you'll see it's only going to let me copy directly horizontal. If I uncheck this constraint, I can come up here and grab that. Now, you'll notice they're much deeper because I'm in just the stone wall here. But I want that window to sit back four inches. So I'm going to change this to four inches. OK, so the way that this default window is built is a little different than um, some other properties that you'll notice. So you'll see this jumped way back as well. 
I didn't want that one, these to jump back. I only wanted these two. So to get around that, I have to duplicate this. So if I duplicate this, and I'll just call these stone. That way, I know this are the same size window, but these are the ones that are set back in the stone. So these now sit back a little bit. There is an issue in Revit. You have, we'll have to build our own windows um, as we get a little bit further in, so that we can take this uh, this frame and make that sit back as well, because we want to see the stone running around it, just like we see here in the in the door. We're still cutting this wall, but this frame is actually sitting back from the stone, because we'll actually see the edge of that stone there. We want the same with our window in this stone, but these windows are not built for that type of um, application. So we'll have to come back in once we kind of get this all laid out and figured out. When we get into the family editor a little bit more, um, we'll build our own window uh, that'll actually sit back in here a little bit more and read correctly uh, within the wall. So we've got those three. Um, I want to center that. Um, in here, so we'll go there and there, and this is actually, so I'm going to have this, and then an extra on this side, I want to center this not inside, I want to center it outside, so when I finally get my, my stud running across here, and an extra stone edge on it and everything, I'm probably going to end up, um, with a little bit extra there so if I go to level 2 and I say I want to create this wall here I'm going to actually go this way so that's going to end up something like that and then our our roof lines and all of that will adjust what this ends up looking like but for now this will give me a decent idea of how that's all going to play out. So if I go to my south elevation and I grab these three, when I grab multiple things the temporary dimensions go away but I can come up here and hit activate dimensions to bring them back. So I can grab that and the outside there. So if I make this three and a half so I get some cleaner dimensions um, so I got six eight and a half inches so this will be ten and a quarter so that centers it up on that overall um, kind of wall there. So we're good there, we're good there. Um, maybe I'll actually, up in the bedroom, I'll take this same window um, and bring that up to the second floor. We'll stack those on top of there. And then level two, we'll make this like a two and a half foot sill height. So that should look pretty decent there. That'll look good there. Um, we'll get a couple windows in here. So we'll use the same. So if I wanted to do different window sizes, I could. Um, I could go in and duplicate and create a bunch of different ones, but. Um, I'm creating kind of gangs of these windows with the same, to get the same look kind of all the way around um, the entire the entire house here. Uh, so I'm going to grab these two. And I want to see these two to be centered on this little porch here. So I've got two foot three is what I need. As long as that gives me plenty of room for casing around it, I should be good, which it will. So I'm okay there. Um, make sure that my window height is still set to three foot three. So that jumps up there. These are all okay because I copied those over from there. So I've got some windows there, some windows there, windows there. Um, I don't think I'm going to need one here. Um, I think I'm going to leave that alone so that way I, if I have like a little end table, I can always add it later if I want to, but I think I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to get another window on the side here 
Um, maybe copy that one up to the second level as well. Um, and then maybe get maybe do a window in the in the bathroom as well, uh, just to bring some natural light in there. So this kitchen window, I have three and a half foot there, so maybe I'll do a little bit larger. I can't get two windows in there, and one would look a little puny, so maybe I'll do a little bit larger window here. So I will duplicate this, and it will be in the stone, so I should be okay there. Instead of 24, maybe I'll do a 30. Whoops, not 2.6, 2 foot 6. Okay there. Whoops. So we'll change this back to 24. And I'm going to change to my 30. And grab that. Okay. So now I want to make sure that this ends up centered between the two here. So this will end up being one foot nine between there. So that will give me plenty of room to kind of work with casing and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I always want to make sure that I don't end up with some goofy detail where the guys in the field have to rip down casing that's three and a half inches wide down to two and a half because I didn't give enough room on the very edge there so um, that's something that I always try to think about to make it a little bit easier on them in terms of placement of all this stuff so maybe I'll take this same same window and stick it in uh, the bathroom here so if I've got a three foot shower here so this will this is going to end up being my shower um, and I've got I don't want it to get hit by my door, but I don't want it to be too close. So if I center it between where the doors open, where the door opens, and the um, and the shower there, I should be okay. Um, let's see. Actually, maybe we'll do something kind of different. Maybe we'll do like a. How much room do we have here? We got about two foot. About two foot six there. Um, I'm thinking maybe we won't do a standard door here. Maybe we'll do like a barn door or something like that. We'll create our own barn door uh, that'll slide off to the side. That'll give it a little bit, play along with that little rustic theme here. Um, but it'll also open the bathroom up uh, quite a bit um, in terms of just space. Um, so the door isn't in the way. So maybe we'll get rid of that for now, and we'll create our own barn door here in a little while. And I won't use this. I'll use a double window of this here. That way there's plenty of light coming in to the bathroom here. Now if I grab these two, now I can center this on in between there. I'm not going to worry about where it's positioned on the outside of the house because it's the back side of the house. Um, and yeah, sometimes I would I would worry about how that's going to be positioned on the back side of the house, but it'll be the only window on that wall. Uh, so I'm not worried about it stacking vertically and being within the gable and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm just concerned about what it's going to look like on the inside and it being on the back side of the house. I'm sort of imagining this tiny house being placed on in kind of tucked back in the woods kind of cottage style sort of thing um, so I am not too terribly concerned about what the back of the house is really um, looking like so if this is centered in this space um, on the inside that's more my concern than than the driving of the outside so I'm going to make sure that all of these are also three foot three window height um, that way I kinda can keep a consistent sill height all the way around and that's looking pretty decent there um, let's go ahead and copy this one we'll copy this one up uh, a level as well and I made that sill height two and a half feet 
so that way those two match. So plenty of light coming into bedroom space up above, um, kitchen, there's plenty of windows on this thing, so even though it's small, it should feel fairly, fairly bright and airy, um, which is always good. So I think that pretty much takes care of placing our windows and kind of getting that, getting our windows and doors in there. Um, we may come back and build our own windows eventually uh, just to kind of get this looking the way we want. Um, so that's a quick sort of run through of kind of windows, a couple of the generic um, uses of them um, and some of the tools and stuff that go along with those. Uh, as well as doors, but we will be playing with those a little bit more as we get into other aspects like materials and stuff like that. We'll end up coming back to the windows and doors to apply those materials and uh, stuff like that. Um, but for now, uh, this looks pretty good, and we can start to move on to something like our um, our roof and our um, our foundation walls and stuff like that. So. Uh, next we'll get into roofs.